afternoon, good evening, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever time you've chosen to join us and however you have, we thank you here from the Bat Cave, or should I say, from the From the Bat Cave Network. <laughs> I'm your host, Red Thunder, JBL Adam Gerard, and I love it. Michael and Jeremy this week are my own Michael Cole, the honey badger himself, Terry O'Neill. Hello! Everybody's favourite Byron Saxton, the probe Matt Richens. So. And course, our very own Dean Ambrose, <laughs> <laughs> the dad that I threatened to hurt. Do the Jew. <laughs> and how are we this week, gentlemen? Are we all we'll right and ready, ready to go from SummerSlam? Yeah. Let me just, right. just, let me just crack it. Oh. All right. <laughs> yeah. well, it's been a good week this week. I'm pretty pumped. Uh, I'm finally going to get to wrestling a little bit later on. We've only been waiting, what, 40, 40, 41 weeks for this? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Pretty much. Well, what I have. It only took Stephen Amell <laughs> going on to WWE television for it to happen, but it is what it is, and uh, Shh, we'll just go with it. It's good time. So, look, but before we get into wrestling, because I'm not going to lie to you folks at home, I'm not going to lie to you from the Batcave universe, I'm fucking pumped. But before we get into that, there's a few things we have to cover. Let's kick it off firstly with the news this week, shall we? In the news this week, obviously, the first thing coming out is that Arrow released the trailer for Season 4, mm. and you'll be very happy to hear that there's lots and lots of fucking eliciting. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh. Flats of penis on my TV again. God <laughs> damn you, fangirls. Yep. I just... I don't get it. You've ruined this city. I don't love it, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no, me neither. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, there's, there's nothing I can really say about this. It's it's, it's a dark day for DC TV. It's, uh... Yeah. 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 It is. It's... Would you like some more shitty news? I have more shitty news. Mmm, delicious! Fill me Would up! Love oh, here's some <laughs> shitty news from Terry. <laughs> this comes straight off the set of the Suicide Squad. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh, no! It's still, it's still stay calm. It's wrong! It's wrong! Okay. It's wrong! And this is what is happening on the set of the Suicide Squad. Apparently, according to rumors, Jared Leto is getting so into character. So, let me rephrase that. For those of you listening to the podcast at home, don't forget to watch these live when you see me throw my fucking air quotes up with my hands, where Jared Leto <laughs> is getting into character by uh, becoming apparently exactly like the Joker. And I mean, personally, he's done the two things that I feel the Joker absolutely did, which is send Will Smith a box of bullets and send um, Margot Robbie, who is playing Harley Quinn, Mm. Love letters as well as a dead rat, and then finally he sent photos of himself around to the crew, cavorting with a pig carcass, because apparently he's just so fucking in the zone. No, mate, what that is is a fucking mental case trying to act like he's in the zone and act it. You're a fucking nutcase. Plain and simple. You're not acting. You're trying too fucking hard, you emo pants wearing fuck. Gentlemen, what are you? <laughs> oh, don't fucking get me started on Jared fucking Leo because I will <laughs> fucking talk the shit out of it. Get on with it, man. Um, I'm giving you the floor. Fuck, I hate Jared Leto, you piece of fucking shit. You are not the fucking Joker. I just. Yeah, I don't like it very much. I can't either. find it. Uh, um, I, I, I just don't. I don't understand anymore. I, don't. I just don't. I just. But he's, but he's. If I can, if I can, not as wacky as my Mount Dew. If I see the dog doing it, if I can, um, if I can just just borrow a, a, a phrase from Aunt Harriet, this is what he is. <laughs> Fuck you, Dan Little. I'm just gonna hurt you really, really bad by playing a really shit acting. Really see, the thing is, when I saw that scene, I imagined like I envisioned like a hat on him with like a shotgun chasing a rabbit. I'm gonna hurt you very, very badly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to kill the wabbit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just going to hurt you. Wee, 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 bad. He looks like Helmet Fudd, too. Fucking bald head, no fucking eyebrow. Oh, I just don't understand anymore. I just... And, and so, wait, look, uh, not, to, not to break the fourth wall of nearly every TV show this week, mm. but not to break the fourth wall, but Terry, <coughs> um, you and I before the show had a bit of a conversation about something, didn't we? About the fact that he's driving around a particular car in this film. Yeah, oh. I, 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 yeah. So, so let, let's go through this conversation for, for the two guy, fine guys that are with us now. Mm. Here's, here's what Terry and I kind of realised. Yeah. Um, they're in Gotham City, right? The only yes. person who could afford that car is not likely to buy a purple one. So where the fuck did he get a purple Lamborghini? Did 
Does he just, did he just go into the store and be like, I'll give you cash if you paint it purple? Does he paint cars himself? Mm-hmm. He'd have to get someone to paint. Oh, is that his supplementary income? Did, did he get it resprayed? I, I just don't know. Because that would be almost the same fucking cost of the car mm-hmm. to get it resprayed. And not only that, but I've, uh, I've read a lot of comics, seen a lot of movies. I've, I've never known the Joker to be like, you know what I need, a sports car. What he's more like is, you know what I need? To a get fucking... Batman to fucking kill me so I win! What the fuck?! I need an ice cream truck. I need a fucking yeah, truck. I need a, I need tr- a mint, no, mint truck. In in the Dark Knight, he drives around in a truck that he stole from a circus, which has a circus logo on it that says laughter, laughter and, and he, he put, put an, an S, S on it that said That's slaughter. the fucking that Joker. fucking perfection. Exactly. That is exactly what it's meant to be. Fucking Heath Ledger's Joker fucking sold me. Like, he's mm-hmm. he, he's my favourite Joker of all time. I'm sorry yeah. for not, not fucking yeah. shit. He was the epitome of what Joker should be. Oh, absolutely. The absolutely. fucking... Unpredictability oh, I, and I, insanity. Yeah. I mean, the stories about the fucking scars on his face changing yeah. every single time. So you mm-hmm. don't fucking know. See, to me, there's only, there is only one person perfection. in my opinion, and it will, it will get into this later on in the night, but there's only one person in my opinion who could take over the mantle of the Joker, and that would be Dean Ambrose. Because yep. he's as fucking psychotic as the Joker anyway. Yep. Yep. But Jared Leto, no, you're a fucking money grabbing failed musician, motherfucker. Ezra Miller. You are Ezra Miller. <laughs> you're a, oh, oh, Ezra. That's a kick in the balls. Am I wrong? No, but that is a kick in the balls. He's Ezra Miller. <sighs> anyway, yeah. Can we? Can right, we move yeah, on? Speaking, speaking, speaking of shit news for the week, Ezra, Ezra Miller has been confirmed in to have a cameo in uh, Batman vs Superman. Shut up! I don't need to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I, I, I don't. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to live in a world where he comes into a Batman vs Superman movie where we all want to see those two characters go at it and have Ezra Miller like you know race with Grant Gustin and find the event horizon and speak like he's perpetually stoned. <laughs> I, I, I inadvertently... There you go. I inadvertently watched the movie with Ezra Miller. Uh, Trainwreck? Yeah. 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 I was like... And didn't he make him want to fucking punch him? I did. Yeah. I was going to make a movie. I'm not hire an actor who could, I don't know, act! Yep. <laughs> you probably hire me for at least a third of the cost. Yeah. I'd hire you for at least a third of the parts and just put different <laughs> wigs on you. Yeah. If I was to make it, if I mean, this is this isn't a word. If this I was to make some sort of, you know, pre-show, yeah, no, I, I for instance put yeah. us in wigs and just have fun with it because you know, yeah, we can act. Yeah. Yeah. Make a note that if Terry is ever in a car accident and becomes unconscious, they're going to give him <laughs> plastic surgery to give him Kevin Owens' nose. Yes. Nice. And, and can we also agree that if we ever. Meet Kevin Owens. We get him to like replace Terry for like five minutes and see. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, yes. I guarantee you everybody will just be like, "Hey, that's Terry speaking with a Canadian accent," and yeah. apparently with a shitty beard. <laughs> <laughs> that's for those of you who watch the pre-show. If you haven't watched the pre-show, head to our YouTube channel. It's there. As long as WWE haven't blocked it again, even though I'm advertising for you with your advertising material that you put out as a press package for people to advertise with. So thanks for blocking it to start with, dumbasses. But I'm not Kevin Owens. These three gentlemen with me in the podcast have not known about this at all. I Matt's sent. Sex I, I don't know. I sent out four emails. Caitlin Richards. Fucking. <laughs> you're, ru- you're ruining my fucking. Yo, know, let's just give him the floor. I'll, I'll step away. You're gonna. You're gonna fucking love We've me. Step away. This, all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta say that I am curious to hear what you're gonna I say. Don't know. I don't Sent off an email to four people. Yes. Who are managers of celebrities. One of them was the Jerry manager. Leto. No, no. One of them was the manager for please Stephen Amell. Please kill your. Sorry, I just want your email to Jared Leto's agent. Can you please kill your client <laughs> so we can save the Suicide Squad movie? Regards, Planet Earth. All right, cool. Earth one. All right. That was, that All was right. number so, five. So, first, first email to the manager of Stephen Amell. Second, manager to Grant Gustin. Third, manager to Ben McKenzie. Fourth. Manager to David Ramsey. Get fucked. I have had three responses back. Can I just interject? What? Have you sent one to Kavanaugh yet? Not yet. I, 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 I haven't. I haven't. Cash. I haven't Second, stopped. I haven't stopped. Up the list because as long as Jay does, I have, like, dicks started getting hard. For I have not stopped. Now yeah. I have had three emails back in response so far. Okay. Unfortunately, two of them have not been willing. Okay. Uh, that was Stephen Amell and Grant Gustin, but I haven't stopped. That was. I would almost, if, if 
I would say one of two things. From the back hey fans out there, if you want us to interview Stephen Hamill, petition him directly because agents won't give a fuck if their clients aren't making money. However, stars actually will if their fans want to see it. Please continue. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working today. I'm going through my... I've got like a list of people I'm dig- digging on. Right. So who did get back to you? The manager for David Ramsey. Diggle? Diggle. The now, Diggle. I have got... I have back no, 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 no. I have got an email not saying... We are not interested. I have got an email saying we want to know your listener stats and your, you know, because I told them basically, I said, look, I'm a co host for a privately run podcast with a live t- uh, Twitch stream mm-hmm. on the internet. And they've said, we want your listener base, downloads, podcast downloads, um, and average fan or listener growth um, per episode. So, um, I'm going to get all those details all right. because I'm not I'm not promising anything, but there is a good chance that we might be able we, to get. We keep handling hey, down. We may hey. eventually get to Felicity, and then we can just yell at her. Hey. Be <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, I'm hoping that we can get a video package from David Ramsey wel- welcoming our listeners to the podcast for an episode. That would be insane. That would rival the Filippo Freddy. That's what I'm aiming for, but oh, yeah. instead of just an audio package, a video package, so that David Ramsey like will it. introduce so, Adam Red Thunder, Honey Badger Terry O'Neill, and Dad Knight Brandon Hearn, and the pro Matt Richards. I love it. On a video package. I love it, bro. Wow. That is deep. Redeem yourself this week. Very That's nice. Good, uh, so, listeners, listen. Tell your friends to listen. Yeah. Find us on Facebook. Find us on Twitter. Yeah, find us on that. YouTube. Uh, Download our podcast off you off iTunes. How, do it because we want some David Ramsey. How do they go about doing us? Where they, where can you go to find us? Where can you go to find that? Well, you can start by finding us on Facebook at facebook.com slash from the Batcave Podcast. You can also find all of our videos and things on YouTube at youtube.com slash from the Batcave Podcast, where you can also which also has our episodes now video. Uh, which we now have a new, brand new video editor who does some wonderful work with our videos, so even better than the Twitch stream. Or send us an email at fromthebatcave.podcast at gmail.com. Should we kick it into this week on TV? And, uh, and then as we, the entree to what will come up later on with Summer Slamming. What do you think? Should we? Yep. Uh, I like the power. Reminds us me. She's got a head as big as the Metrodome as it is. Oh, well, what do you expect? Garlands thrown at your feet? Well, I'd like a 145-foot triple master schooner with a teak interior, but hey, Lola. <laughs> Time's up. What's everybody standing around for? It's a newspaper. Not happy hour at Buckingham Palace. Jimmy, never underestimate the need for a good obituary. Great shades of Elvis. What are we here? The Daily Planet? God damn, I love Terry White. Uh, he is the best part of that show. Oh, absolutely. Amendment to the to Adam's last supper. <laughs> <laughs> we need a marquee for all these motherfuckers. I haven't even reached 12 yet. <laughs> so you've got Adam at the centre of the table. Drinks right, being... Jesus. <laughs> drinks being served by Terry Hatchett. Uh... <laughs> discussion group including J Dubs, Tom Kavanagh, yep. Diggle, yep. uh, Perry White. Yep. Uh, who else am I missing? Cranston. Cranston. A couple more of my men have been in there. Yeah. Dan Haday. Dan, Dan Haday, that's right, Dan Haday. Actually, it? we haven't had one of my men for a while. However, stay tuned, folks. Flash. Alright, cool. Flash. Opie in Central City in 1955 were introduced to The Ghost, a man in the TV. Who has been holding the city ransom? As the 50s of that convoluted. 
During which a masked vigilante called Nightshade tracks down and defeats the ghost. Moments before the factory in which ghost resides explodes, he escapes. Factory? Hat factory? Into the cryogenic visa. Where he sleeps, <laughs> from, sleeps and wakes in 1990, a full decade before he wished to awake. The ghost waste discovers technology has finally caught up with his ambitions and proceeds to cause mayhem, starting at a telethon, where he distracts the particip- participants so his goons can steal enough equipment to start his devious ways again. The next target is Star Labs, as they have the best technology the Central City has to offer. An open invitation is sent to Flash by Ghost to try to stop him, but Flash is trapped in a force field because Nightshave arrives and inter- interrupts but gets shot in the process because, you know, he's old now. Following a series of test runs by, by, the, ghost, Nightshave, by the Ghost, Nightshave decides to take action and starts tracking down Ghost and his whereabouts. First tracking down Ghost's fallen partner, he discovers Ghost had never left. Layer. Flash decides to join him on his quest and they both leave to the old brewery where Ghost is held up because, you know, old buildings always hold ghosts. In the meantime, Ghost has successfully merged with Central City's Information Technology Network, broadcasting the standard typical bad guy model of Ghost Man's one billion dollars. While Flash is headed to Star Labs, seemingly Nightshade has gone to confront the ghost. As it turns out, Flash has posed as Nightshade to get by the guards. After a fight with Ghost and being dragged into the network in which Ghost is God and Nightshade, then Nightshade arrives with a new signal jammer in hand to stop the, stop the signal Ghost is essentially living in and allowing the Flash to overcome Ghost. Ending with Nightshade retiring and handing the vigilante torch to Flash because, you know, that's what happens. Nightshade tells Flash if you need to, you need to talk to him, you always go, come to him for advice. The end. Now, did you say that uh, the Flash got pulled into the network? Yes. How much was the network? I don't know. Nine ninety nine. Yeah, I think it was that much. Me too. Yeah. I think you got to take into account inflation. It was probably a bit cheaper than that. It was about five ninety nine. Yeah, it was probably about five dollars thirty seven or something. Yeah, but by today's standards. Nine ninety nine. One hundred and seventy channels. This is the future! Oh god. Where's the flying? Where's the, the jetpack? Where's I have, the food? I have pits? a question though. Mm-hmm. The Flash is set sometime in 1936. This guy's from 1950 and he's from the past because apparently they're also in the, the future. Flashboy paradox. So is this nine, is, is the Flash meant to be in 1970 like, something? Or? I don't know. Hashtag, what year is this? Hashtag what year is this revolution? Yeah. <laughs> it seems they also. Um, Back in the 50s, gay rights was, was fine, like gay people were fine back then, because they had a little, uh, I think it was a club, wasn't it? Yes, Remember yes, it? yes, yes. Uh, gay and, and it was called Gay and Frisky. Well, you see, back in the 50s, Brayden, the term gay was actually happy. And frisky, okay, and well, morning, when... so happy and horny. Happy and horny? Boom, yeah. education. Yeah. Get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like it you. It's kind of like faggot was a bunch of sticks. Yep. 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 Yeah. Um, I don't know. The, the, <laughs> the episodes are getting better. This was my... Uh, Wait, you're down there. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it's got. <laughs> um, the, the episodes are getting marginally better, though. That's the thing. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's getting better. The, unfortunately, there was no lighting budget. Oh, my, this. yeah. I watched this show on two different screens. Because first of all, I watched it on my computer. I tried to watch the disc. I have the DVD, right? So I thought, I watched the DVD. The DVD had a scratch. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll watch it online because I have to. Mm-hmm. Watch it online. I'm trying to watch it on a computer, my computer. And I'm like, huh, is my brightness set wrong? No. So I downloaded it, streamed it to my, my theater where I watched it on a big screen. I'm still sitting there fucking around with projection at settings and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Because for some reason, there is no light in this show this week. No. Like, I don't... Well, I, one did, of the, did the best boy and the, the key group just not turn up? Well, oh. I think it was the fact that the, one of the main characters was called Nightshade, so, you know. It's it's probably the same... Uh, the same lighting dude that had the problem with um, mm-hmm. yeah. Terminator. That is true. Yeah. And Christian <laughs> Bale. Yep, that is true. Where are they <laughs> going? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Same, same DP. Mm. Where's the lighting rigs at? Basically. <laughs> Uh, Maybe that was, that was a bit disappointing. Yeah. Like it just didn't. I'm sitting there and I'm like, I want to enjoy this, but I can't. Yeah. Like, and I know it wasn't wrong because it got to the title card at the end, and that was bright red. Yep. 
But there's a point where the flash, you, I couldn't it comes tell from the flash was in it. No, it could, I couldn't tell the colour of his uniform. It looked black. Really? It wow. looked like, all I could see was his mouth. Like, I, honestly, I'm sitting there like, oh, I'm watching Batman. I watched mm-hmm. Batman this week, starring The Flash. <laughs> oh, JWS is Batman. Ooh. But, hey, let's be real. That's what they're showing. Yeah. But honestly, the, the show is getting better. No. The shit stains that we had sort of the past. It's starting to. I saw you at not, not just I'm clenching. We're only a couple of, we're, we're a couple of episodes away from it getting really good with the first appearance of the trickster, so We are, we are. Spoilers. Spoilers. Fuck. That's what they put those colours. It's not like we've covered it before or anything. <laughs> you fucking morons. <laughs> Bunch of maroons. Anyway, yeah, this week's flash was It's hard to remember. Underwhelming. Rate, not, not, yeah, I, that's it, exactly. Underwhelming is nothing happened. Yeah, nothing yeah. happened. It was so five that's, that's why I'm struggling. It's just, it's just like the last couple of episodes, nothing has happened. Well, well nothing has not, happened that's like actually made sense. Well, it's not even like a nothing has happened in a way where we could talk about and be like, why is nothing developing like what happens in um, Gotham? Yeah. It's just literally nothing is happening. It's got retro IGS syndrome. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yep. Ir- irritable Gotham syndrome has started. It's running again. Retro, actively. Mm. Space type of, it's like a paradox, man. My <laughs> Barry and his Barry, man. And they oh, found man. the event horizon, man. and fuck him, man. <laughs> man, I run super fast. Oh. I'm so happy I've got this thing, man. Cause, I can just you know, do it for the next 20, 20 years. years. Because I know I'm not a good enough actor to ever get cast in anything else. Pretty much. I'm Ezra Miller. And I'm it's it, it, it's got to be the new f- uh, Fantastic Four. It's going to be, no, Ezra Miller will break one. Ezra Miller will be terrible, but I can't. Uh, if what the, I'm hearing is right about be. fucking Ben Affleck's Batman, and now with The Rock putting out a tweet saying that Black Adam is going to come and kick Superman in the dick in this film. <laughs> Direct quote. I'm coming to kick Superman in the dick. Yeah, I saw that. Was that, so, was that where he's got yeah. the Superman shirt on? All yeah. I could think was that, like, I, I'm pretty sure, spoilers for later on, The Rock watched The Undertaker Lesnar match and was like, yeah. I could kick a bitch in the dick too. Well, yeah. <laughs> Before we get on to that later on, uh, so thoughts on uh, this week's flash, Brayden. Brayden. Yeah, it's like you said, nothing really happened. The characters were good, like the villain wasn't too bad. Um, but yeah, nothing happened. Well, it's it's kind of a stock standard episode, really, isn't it? It was. It was stock standard, but it was. It was better than a lot of the ones we've yeah. seen before. I enjoyed the villain. It was different. I enjoyed it. I sort of I liked him sort of towards the end there. He's plugged into all the computers and stuff yeah. like that. That was that was pretty cool. There was, a big, knockers, actually. there was a big fuck up though when the flash starts ripping all the shit off of him. They clearly shot it and it's sped it up, mm. but they didn't bother telling the actor playing the goes to like breathe slower. So he sits there going, his yes. chest is just going like breathing like that. So he's <laughs> hyperventilating so fast his lungs have exploded. Yeah. So no wonder he's kind of slumped in the chair. Again, so. I agree. I agree. But no, this flash was killed a bit. Body count. Boom. Um, no, in comparison to, like, the normal politicians and, you know, corrupt cops that we get, it's nice to see, like, a villain with some sort of supervillain edge, I think. I suppose, for me. For me, um, I think <coughs> Nightshade or Nightshadow did more Nightshade. than... Nightshade. did more than... Yeah, I think it was mainly it was sort of his episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, like, the retiring mm-hmm. vigilante. And I liked, actually, I liked that sort of vigilante for Nightshade. Yeah. I liked that. I like It'd be good if he was a recurring of part of this. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, he had a trophy. It was basically Batman's trophy room. It was the Batcave. Yeah. Of the animation. Yeah. Right. So should we give Cranston's and Barbara's just now while we're here? Yeah, I guess we may as well. Uh, yep. <laughs> I, <moved my> <laughs> I, I, I I know who my barber is. Who's your barbwa? The villain's bitch. Bell? Yeah. <laughs> I can't do this anymore! <laughs> no, I'm going to let jump on that one as well. I agree. She was the Aunt Harriet. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm giving my uh, my barber to the lieutenant because he stole Barry's food. He stole both his burritos. That is true. Come on, be more of a fucking <laughs> dick. Be more of a dick. You got a wife now. Get her to cook. You fucking prick both of them. Like, come on. Mm. If so, like literally, if my boss did try to do that to me, I would stab him. You'd, I would no, stab him in the fucking face with the burrito, and then I'd piss on him, what? and then I'd eat the burrito, and take a big fucking burrito dump on his corpse, and tell him to fuck off my burrito. Or he could just... My, my burrito. burrito! Just 
just kick him in the dick. <laughs> That is true. That is the go. That is going to be my go-to move now. When everybody's like, you can't like a command of the dick, and be like, hey, I'm the Undertaker. <laughs> All right, our Cranston's. None. Nightshade. Yeah. I'm Dr. Power, Nightshade. I'm going to go with that. None. And did Brayden give out a Yeah, bar? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Nightshade too. Nightshade. Three Nightshades? Cranston. You gave out a barbed wire, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, no, but I'll probably like jump on to the misses. Yeah, oh, no. Harriet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Aunt Harriet. Blood signs. How many bloods you keep them with? Two and a half out of five. One. Yeah, one. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a finger. One. Yeah. Yeah, that's Just a finger. That's fair. Yeah, Fred? Um, I'll give you two. Fingers or gloves? Uh, two gloves. It's better than a lot of the ones we've seen so far. That's the same one. <laughs> it's it's, it's only two. Like it's that dog it's not even halfway there. That dog turd that's so, like three weeks old. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, moving on. Lois and Clark, episode 9, Man of Steel Bars. It's 95 deg uh, degrees Fahrenheit in November, with, and the citizens of Metropolis are as confused as they are boiling. As a heat. It, as the heat exhaust, Lois discusses the problem with an invisible <laughs> non uh, non plus them? Non plus them. It's a word Rome means just not. Meh. I'm not phased. Alright, so with this Non plus Clark? Non plus Clark, yeah. It just means because he's not sweating. Because she keeps being like, yeah. you're not sweating. Oh, he's oh, like, yeah. ah, I don't need to sweat, I'm Clark. In fact, the one, just interject here. This was something that pissed me off, right? She says that to him, and the easiest answer in the world is, yeah, I'm from Kansas. The hottest place in America. The center of the fucking earth. That's where I'm from. Of course I'm not sweating in 96 degrees. This is fucking winter. That's like going to somebody from Canada be standing in the snow in their fucking underpants and being like, aren't you cold? No, I'm fucking Canadian. Of course I'm not cold. Double. This is summer. Anyway, continue. Anyway. Various, uh, various citizens are secretly aided by Mr. Kent's uh, Mr. Kent's superpowers as Clark cools down a taxi cab radiator with his ice breath and unscrews a fire hydrant with his super strength and speed. Good guy, Clark. Good guy, Clark. Good guy, Clark. That Dean Kane. Yeah, Dean Kane. Up against fucking Superman? <laughs> the mayor calls a press conference where angry reporters from different media uh, frantically question him as to what the city plans to do with the heat wave. Lois uh, mentions that uh, brownouts are coming all uh, that are occurring all over the city. To which the mayor responds, "It's nothing. The power company can handle it before another brownout occurs." Lex Luthor announces that he has achieved total clearances for a brand new LexCorp nuclear power plant that will power the entire city. When questioned about a theory as to why the heat wave is occurring, one of these scientists suggests that Superman may be the cause. Later at the planet, one of the reporters shows Perry a graph that. Uh, shows various super feats, some referring to a previous episode committed by Superman, which correlate to the rising heat. Lois very, um, very vocally disagrees with the theory, but Perry wants her to try and be objective. Clark reluctantly agrees with Perry. We had a lovely moment with Perry White coming in with his shorts and being like, Hey, you haven't seen a pair of legs before? Oh, oh, man, fuck it, get back to work, is this the daily plan? I love, <laughs> I love the fact Cat came in dressed. As a whore. I don't think she... <laughs> and then she didn't even realise it was a heat wave. <laughs> yeah. Was the, yeah. Was a heat wave? Oh, but my tan is beautiful. It's like, whore, fuck off. Back at Lex Corp, Lex and the scientists from the press conference talk about the scheme. Luther is not only responsible for heat wave, but also for implicating Superman's involvement. Superman appears in court and agrees to comply. By ceasing, to use the, the, by ceasing the use of his superpowers... The suspension doesn't last very long, however, as Superman uses heat vision to incapacitate an escaping crook. Superman is put under arrest, and a humorous montage of his procession takes place. While in the jail cell, Superman gets hazed by the other prisoners, including one he caught earlier that day. That guy was a dick. He was a dumbass. That's full of, yeah. Full of turd. This was a sausage fest. <coughs> I just want to say, like... 
this bullshit about him getting not being able to use his superpowers, it's like not like he has any traits with his super strength. If someone punches him in the face... I, I, I got something Punch coming up for that later because it's actually a violation of civil liberties. But we'll get into that a bit later but on. Like, you know, super, it's not like, oh, hang on, I'm going to use my super strength for a second. <laughs> you know? I like the fact that in order to do it, he has to make a J-Wall noise. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like if you're going to punch Superman, it's going to hurt your hand no matter whether he fucking intends to or not. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. And I also don't think that's using your superpowers. That's right. But anyway. He's just a man still. People of Metropolis are dumb. They are so yeah. dumb. They are dumb. So dumb. j Law dumb. For real. For real. They Except climb for it in your bedroom. Not Perry. <laughs> later he pleads... Well, what was that, Brady? Except for Perry. <laughs> That's true. I'll get into that later. Perry's actually the smartest man on the planet. Yep. Oh, yeah. Later he pleads not guilty and the judge agrees to release him to reckon... Uh, Recognised of the Daily Planet until further than notice, he's available regarding the relationship between the heatwave and his superpowers. While in the Daily Planet, Superman is bombarded by Elvis stories from Perry as well as which is fucking amazing, as well as pleas from Lois and Cat for him to come and stay at their place respective or in stay in their respective apartments. Stay in their respective holes. Yeah. Or leave and then go back in and then leave again. Leave out the back door, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Ha! Back door! <laughs> Such a whore. Superman decides to stay at Clark's knowing that he wouldn't mind. Because, you know, Clark loves the Superman in his apartment. It's fun life having Superman around. The scientists warn Lex to stop messing with the city's heat. Luthor reveals that $5 million has been paid to the scientists that he should stop meddling. He then opens a suitcase revealing a power console controlling the city's heat. Lois shows up at Clark's apartment and offers some, to make some dinner for he uh, for him and Superman. Clark explains that Superman would probably prefer, would probably prefer to be alone, and Lois suggests that staying uh, that in saying that Superman is probably crying out for help. In order to be, appear to be in his apartment at the same time as Superman, Clark. Creates a ruse suggesting that <sighs> Superman is just coming out of the shower. Clark convinces Lois that he's going to uh, going in to fetch Superman for dinner, and when he emerges, he's dressed as the Man of Steel. Luther causes an express train disaster in an attempt to attract Superman's attention, forcing him to use his powers so that Luther can implicate him further in the case, in the cause of the heat. Jimmy alerts Lois to the fact that the hot spots in the city are completely unrelated to where the superfeeds took place. However, it's too late as Superman has agreed, uh, already agreed to leave Metropolis for good. A heartbroken child throws a Superman an action figure at him in disgust. And Clark writes a nice article about it, which is like proof that Clark Kent is probably the best fucking reporter on that stuff too. That was a really good like, move on Clark's part. Yeah, yeah, it was a smart move. Yeah. Smart move. Still, that one was a dumb bit. Um, <laughs> Someone's angry. Jonathan Martha show up to try and convince Clark to stay in Metropolis, perhaps even at the cost of his identity as Superman. Clark is adamant that he is leaving and breaks the news to, uh, to a confused, angry, and ultimately heartbroken Lois. And gives her a nice kiss, too. Receiving Jimmy's findings regarding the hotspots, Dr. Goodman, a star lab scientist who believes that Superman had no connection to the heatwave shows Lois the metrop uh, Metropolis Aquifer, explaining that the that they are boiling and when they should be extremely cool. Lois and Goodman deduce that the heat is uh, that the heat that is causing the aquifer to, aquifer to boil must be a leak from the electrical nuclear power plant, which was discussed in the press conference earlier, but apparently it's bang your rain. Lex rejoices with, with Nigel that Superman will finally be out of his way for good. During a live Very special good. news report regarding Superman's departure from Metropolis, Lois Lane interrupts sending a message to Superman that he had nothing to do with the heat wave and that there is a serious emergency at the LexCorp power plant. Superman meets Lois at the plant and despite Luther's protest, goes into the reactor and interrupts the injection sequence, enabling him to stop the leak and end the heat wave. Later at a uh, a depressed Lex bemoans the failure of his 
plants a nodule, explaining that the leak was perfectly under control, his control the entire time. However, Nigel points out that the air conditioning division of Rex Corp made a 2,000% profit in the past two weeks. Rex rejoices his silver lining. Oh, that shit song. Mm-hmm. Love it, No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Clark returns to the day where Perry return, uh, turns his own unopened letter of notice and Lois claims that she knew Clark would be back. Uh, I just want to point one thing I'm out. sorry. Perry White knows... Clark Kent is Superman. Yep. You don't get twice. To... Twice yeah, in this episode, I'll he points that. it directly to him when he phone, like Clark phones for, or Superman gets his one phone call and calls Perry and is like, "Hey boss." Hey boss. Um, and <laughs> Perry's like, "Where are you, Kent?" And he's like, "I'm at the I'm at the, the prison." And he's like, "Well, you just stay there until Superman gets out." Okay, that's not gonna be too hard. You do that, son. Good. And then like where Clark quits, and then he turns back up and he's like, "You know, Clark, I kept this letter because you don't need to go. It's it's good to have you here." Where you belong, oh, son. With this knowing gaze of like, yeah. you made the right choice. So sure, Perry, man. Perry, Perry's the Perry best knows. investigative reporter in the world. He has to know. Yeah, has to know. That the thing that that the article Clark wrote has too much heart and gravitas not to be written by super person. Yeah, like, super. There's a lot of first person. Yes. Yeah. The only the yeah. only the only person who gets blinded is Lois because she thinks Clark is just hero worshiping, which makes a little sense from her perspective because in her mind they can't be the same person. They just can't be. Yeah. But Perry is but smart enough to be like, well, of course you're well, going to need to disguise. Well, <laughs> like, there's, a, there's a number of times where Lois has almost gone, hang on, but then instantly yeah, she pulls back. back. Like, I, I was surprised that she didn't notice with the kiss. See, has, part Su- has, Superman kissed, like, has Superman kissed Lois in this? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, Not yet. But I think, that it, I, for me, I think this sort of Lois line that's being portrayed already knows, but she doesn't want to believe it. Well, the other thing as well is that the, the entire point of this show is they build, like, you can see, the point of this show is Lois and Clark become a couple. That's what they're building towards. So the have her know now is too early. You've got to build towards that so that he gets the choice of telling it. You want to come to it soon. Yeah. <laughs> you, want <a> <laughs> yeah. You, want, um, you want a good four seasons of foreplay. The other thing that, that or there are a couple of things I really <laughs> yeah. like, Dean Cain is so perfectly comic book Superman, like in the jail cell <laughs> where great. he's like, he's great. Uh, like that guy's right. like, like uh, oh, help me. goes to punch Superman and Superman just moves out of the way and the, the guy punches like a bigger prisoner. No, and he's no. like, you're going to help me? And Superman's like, I can't, <laughs> can't, can't do anything. Then Can't use my, can't use yeah, my superpowers. Yeah, just stands it's like, what can you do? Not allowed to use my superpowers. Because in the comics, yeah. Superman's a dick hole. Yeah. Let's face it, he's, he's a, a dick. dick. Uh, so there's that. And to another thing, Mara Park Kent, just a perfect... I am so pale. The, the hurt on Jonathan Kent's face when Clark says, I have to leave and say goodbye to everyone. Oh, I come know. back to small, and, he goes, can't even come back to small. And Pa turns his back on Clark with just this look of like, you just broke my heart. It's just... And finally, you cannot put Superman on trial and tell him not to use his superpowers. That's a violation of civil liberties because they're not superpowers to him. That's fucking existing. That's like going up to me and saying, look, there's an injunction on you. You're not allowed to speak ever again. You can't take it away from me. In saying that... You're not allowed to be a ranger. In, 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 exactly. In saying that... That's my I, word too, come. <laughs> Sorry, Ginger. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> um, he's an alien. Mm. They know he's an alien. They have, have do, the laws, do the laws apply? Are yeah. they applicable to... I well, would then if count they, that... If they don't apply, he, he didn't need to be on trial. Yeah, if they, okay, yeah, fair point. If they don't apply, he can't be put on trial. But the thing is, Firstly, he went willingly. That's a, that's but a funny thing. secondly, then if you can, if we're going to go by that notion, he would be covered probably under like animals, cruelty to animals, and acts of that nature because he's a, a, a lesser or a different being to human. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. So what they're doing would actually constitute cruelty and injustice. Yep. Which once again, so the, <laughs> the entire judgment is fucking just it's all over redundant. The shop. Yeah. But I think it was a good plot point. Yeah, and, and that's all and, it was. And, and saying that, like, like, you can't frown at fucking Superman for mm, you can't. stopping, Superman does the right stopping thing the guy from shooting someone by heating the gun up. No, that was... Like, that was like, yeah. dude, there like, were kids there. Everyone praised him for it. You can't just go, I oh, yeah, put the laws to the law. The law's the law, bitch, you've got to go to jail. Go to jail, they jail. Take- I can't use powers no more. Even in trials, in front of a jury, they take that sort of shit into consideration. I could guarantee the whole fucking jury would have been like, 
and save the day. It's not a... But here's... Right, it was a county, hearing. Yeah. It wasn't county. a trial. It's not it a, a trial. That's why that bitch can't object. Yeah. It's a hearing. So there is no jury. Yeah, so no. even at the it end of the day... Lay, it was slay Because precedent. it is a hearing, I don't actually think they can... Uh, they, can't they can't put an injunction, or injunction on someone. You can, you can order a trial at that point. Yeah. yeah. So he should have... The person... He should have been like, 10 minute court. Let's put me... And you know why You know why they wouldn't do that? Because, let's be real... Who in Metropolis, where are you going to find a group of 12 people who are going to fucking convict Superman? One person. <laughs> There's two people. Nigel. Lex and Nigel. That's it. Um, uh, I'm going to say something quite controversial right now. Terry Hatch wasn't as hot in this episode. Dean Kane is the best Superman of all time. I'll give a close second, but I can't agree. Okay, yeah, I'm re- close, close second. I'll go close second too. I want to hear your reasons. My reasoning is this, that we, we the, uh, uh, first of all, you guys all count Reeve as number one? Yes. Correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here's, here's my argument to that. Superman 2, Superman 4, Superman 3. And the reason I argue that is because in Superman 1, he's Superman, and Clark Kent perfectly. In Richard Donner's cut of Superman 2, boy, is he Superman. And oh, is he Clark? In the rest of them, yeah, he's dude. Nice opinion, he's dude. Dean Kane, however, is humble, shucksy. I don't know, Ma Pa. Thank you for coming. I love you guys. Are I you love saying everything. For, for continuity's then, sake? Not just for continuity. Just the prison scene alone. Okay. Superman in prison is. It, if you picked up a Superman comic and Superman got sent to prison, that would be what would happen. And yet, it's not comical. Well, I mean, it's comical, but it's not. Farcical. It's not 66 yeah. Batman. It's not ridiculous. It's just so real because of how he plays it. Fair enough. So to me, that is perfection of Superman. Okay, that's cool. Okay. For me, I think uh, it's just the fact that I hold Christopher Reeve so near and dear to the heart. That's all. That's true. But I, I guess the other thing is I've got I've seen all four seasons of Lois and Clark as well, so I, I know because I know where he ends up as well. I think for me, I'm tainted a little bit for that, but I'm, yeah. I'm fairly certain that by by next year when we're into season two, I'm, you guys. I'm, I'm gonna. Predetermined or predetermined? Um, I've, I've got an idea that Hen- Henry Cavill is going to take my number one Superman with Batman vs Superman as my number one Superman. Yeah. I, lo- I love. Henry I want to talk about Superman. him next week. Anyway, <laughs> send your applications to the fourth position on from back day. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we need you to go there, Brad? <laughs> I can have an opinion, motherfuckers. Yeah, you can. They're just not good. Oh, um, much like brains with themes. <laughs> or brain with knowing that the third parts are normally good. Um, except for Superman hey. 3. He was right on that one. Yeah, that's true. Uh, although Richard Pryor and that cyborg... Bit, we're getting off track. Um, <laughs> look. Let's, Segway. Because let, we're just streaming off track on this one, which means it was a good episode, so there's not much for us to bitch about. Let's let's throw out some Cranston's and some awards this, shall we? Let's, let's get through TV, because the reason we're all going nuts is we're just fucking killing time for wrestling. Anyway. So, Cranston's... In fact, no, Barbara's first. Barbara's for this episode. I'm just going to go with Lex, but they... they That was easy. They make him just hate Lex. It's kind of where they seem to be going with this whole series. It's, let's just give you something else to hate the Barbara. You are supposed to hate Lex Luthor. Yeah, I, I mean, know. I, know. I mean, They're let's doing face a really it. good job of making it. Uh, what's his name? What's the what's the fuckhead's name? Jesse Eisenberg has made me hate Lex Luthor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but fairly fairly fuck fucking it. confident. Hey, Jesse Eisenberg you, you has made you hate Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg. Too. That's that's true. They could put Tom Hardy as Lex Luthor and it would work just as well. Uh, <laughs> but let's not let's not go on the sidetrack of how wrong that casting is for Bond. Let's let's let let Perry. I want to hear that so, because so honest, I struck a chord. You struck a chord simply because the worst pun of all time came out of this episode. Two. Okay. There was two. I only, I only caught one. It's in the same speech. Okay. Because uh, I caught... I got you, babe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other one, actually, I've got to... I'll bring out the page, because actually the quotes... That, uh, the only thing I took Barbara, out was, he's a small guy. My barber goes to Sonny Bono for the worst cameo I've ever fucking seen. Um, he played the mayor. And... Uh, mayor! Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> it's just... Oh, it was horrible. It's just the fact it was blatant self promotion. promotion. He quoted two of his own. What, yeah, what was the other one? It was I've got you, babe. Was that it? Uh, yeah, I, I got, got you, babe. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. What's the other one? Give me. Go to the other guys. I'll find the other one. Okay, well, no, what, where you got that? I, 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 just, I found him just 
Okay. Flat I, too, I, babe. I, yeah. I, I'm gonna have to. Like, I'm not gonna uh, lay jump onto that, but I can see where you're coming from. Just, that it was it was a bit of a waste. It was. It was horrible. You're gonna get it. Like, he doesn't look like the type of guy who'd be mayor. And his um. Mayor. And his uh, responses weren't very mayor like. They were just like, we got this. Yeah. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. I got it. I'm, that's I'm, it. I got I'm, you, babe. That's that's. I got you, babe. No. Wait no, that's what he already said. I'm I'm gonna go out a line here and say, uh, mayor of Mo, better mayor. That's yeah. so hard, man. Not that thing. Braden, I understand that you and the mayor, in fact, went this week to purchase his winning pop model. Yeah, so as, as our frequent listeners would know that the mayor has entered our Hall of Fame. He's standing uh, up. Everyone knows his name. Yeah, yeah. And as a result, won a pop cap vinyl. Uh, ran into the mayor of Mo down the street the other day. <laughs> he, was here, he was here and we're like, oh, hey. So we went to go and get said pop cap vinyl. And there was, you know, quite a, a selection of superheroes and things like that. And he said, no, I want Elsa just to piss you off. So, just letting you know, which there was no Elsa there. There was no Elsa there. So, There's a uh, Mayor of Mo, I haven't told you this yet, but I have your Elsa. I have found one and I have it for you. Please. So, Brayden, let me get this right. When you hand over this uh, Elsa doll, you're going to have to uh, let, let go. go. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is. I think he is. God. Yeah, yeah, prob- probably going to have to. And you're going to have to do it soon because I'm pretty sure the mayor doesn't want to wait. <laughs> <laughs> he, who, who would? Who would? I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. Talking over my Dawson's Creek, you piece of shit. Who's your, who are you giving it to? Nigel. Nigel's the, the butler. Nigel. No. But the, the, the Lex Corp uh, air conditioning part is up by 2,000 percent. <laughs> It's just a bad shot of being an evil announcer. Alfred. Yeah. Inverse Alfred. Inverse <laughs> Alfred. <laughs> yeah. Fair call. Yeah. He's about as tall as fucking sixty six Batman's Alfred as well. Yeah. Oh my god, sixty six <laughs> bat- Batman, six foot six Alfred. Yeah. Yep. Six foot six. Damn straight. Man, we're cracking this gavel. My gavel's wearing down. <laughs> Need a new one. Can we get uh, ah? Can we get Josh to get me a new one? I found I found the quote. Yep. It's the beat goes on. Oh. And the beat goes oh. on. Yeah. So you used yeah that the heat goes on from the song the beat goes on. That was a pun. And I got you, babe. So it was just flaccid. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Nah. Nah. No. Oh, I thought about late jumping onto that, but no. My uh, my Barbara. Goes to Lex Luthor because he wasn't even like he didn't even say Superman this week. He just didn't do anything. I think he was just depressed. I did. I did like him burning money though. That was, <laughs> that was just hundred dollar notes in the fire because he's so pissed off. And Reverse Alfred comes in. And is like, sir, is everything all right? <laughs> he's just fucking whiffing hundreds in the fire. Let's hand out some Cranston's. I'm Mark, gonna go first. Fuck you, Parkham. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's where I was going. That's where I was going. I was going Parkham. God damn, he's it's, good. it's kind of hard to actually like out of you watch if you watch a lot of TV, um, it's kind of hard for an actor to actually portray a hurt father very well, and that was well done. Was hey, the only the only other one I've seen do it is uh, JWS. Mm, JWS. In fact, he did it in this show. I don't want to wait. And he's I didn't want to wait. He's almost done it on the flash, though. He's been close, but he's, he's too, crazy, too proud of Barrett on the flash. Oh, Dawson awesome. disappointed him one too many times, and then he dropped his ice cream. Shh, stop Adam. Just, just. Cranston, guys. Cranston is going to. Why did he not let, just let the ice cream drop? It still haunts me. <laughs> if we get him on this show, I'm going to literally be like, you destroyed my childhood, J Dubs, man. I love you so much, and when you died, I felt like my actual dad had died. <laughs> I went and hugged my dad that night, and I was like, Dad, I fucking love you, man. Don't, don't ever die. eat ice cream and Don't drive. eat ice cream in the car. <laughs> Please. Even if it's stationary, don't do it. <laughs> my grandson is going to Perry White. <laughs> it's, it's good. Good answer. It's good news. Oh, it's because of his legs? Because you've never seen another pair of legs before. Sexy bony legs, though. Those are. Right yep. Tell us how wrong you are. I've got Perry. two. I've got two. Got Perry Aaron White Reynolds. and Dean Kane. Who? Dean Kane and Perry White. Ah, so the Cranstons to Superman and the man who knows who Superman is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. 
don't know how many gloves we're giving this one. We'll give it three and a half out of a fiver. I'm giving it a four. Yeah, you no, would. I'm, I'm going to give it a four. You would. Uh, I'll go three and a half. Good boy. Oh, God. Decisive. Ooh, that's <laughs> like rock the boat, break. <laughs> All right, let's move into let's move into Batman and False Face. His face was false. Too many times. Batman and False Face, starting with episode seventeen, titled "True or False Face." <gasps> the villainous master of disguise, False Face, disguises himself as the Queen of Mergenberg's escort and steals her crown, replacing it with the fake one under the under the very noses of the police. Examining the false crown, Batman and Robin find an obscure clue that suggests false face. False face's next crime will be to hijack an armored car. The dynamic duo arrive at the Gotham City Bank and catch the villain red-handed. But when the police arrive to apprehend his gang, false face disguises himself as Police Chief O'Hara and makes his escape. Batman and his trusty chum suspect, false face of a counterfeit. Sorry. Batman and his trusty chum suspects false face of a counterfeit money scheme so and so head off for the bank note printer's office. Here they capture Blaze, false face's attractive henchwoman who is attempting to steal the stash of money paper. They take her to police headquarters for questioning, unaware that she that the Chief O'Hara taking part is none other than false face in disguise. Blaze takes the dynamic duo to an abandoned subway station where she gasses them, and false face glues them to the train tracks as two trains quickly approach. Disaster threatens! Bashed by the BMT! Will the dynamic duo dice with death and descend to defeat? Can Batman and Robin break the unbreakable? Slip out of the chemical clutches? Escape the epoxy? Keep your bat wings crossed until tomorrow! Same time, same channel, same perilous predicament. Oh, look. <laughs> Episode 18, Holy Rat Race. Glued oh. to a railway track with epoxy adhesive, Batman and Robin are saved when Alfred, on hearing of their peril through the radio, throws a short-circuit short lever to the bat transmitter. This causes Batman's radio to explode, melting the epoxy on his wrist and enabling him to use his bat laser to free himself and the boy Wonder mere seconds before the train passes through the station. Returning to Commissioner Gordon's office, the dynamic duo deduce that Falseface is planning a bank robbery in which he will replace real money with his own fake bills. The two heroes hide in the bank vault, surprising Falseface and his cronies when they break in. The Master of Disguise and Blade Blaze manage to escape on the tick truck, but Batman and Robin chase them to Bioscope music, Movie Studios. Here, Falseface discovers that Blaze has a crush on Batman and that it was she who sent the radio message that alerted Alfred. He takes her hostage and then leads the Cape Crusader and the Boy Wonder on a long winding chase around the movie sets. Batman and Robin, along with the help of Chief O'Hara and Commissioner Gordon, capture False Face and Blaze is sent into is sent to be rehabilitated. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I got to say the makeup on False Face for 1966 was pretty impressive yeah. because I did not see where that mark joined his neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only thing he was his mouth. That, yeah, that mask was. That was a false face. It was P legit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, absolutely. I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, we've got to uh, we've got to remember that it's sixty six Batman and the effects and and whatnot. But it's for funny. me, it's always the sets that get it for me. Mm-hmm. For me, mm-hmm. it's always the sets, like the locations they use, even like the exit out of the Batcave. It's it's perfect. That's what does it for me with sixty six Batman. One issue I have with the set this episode. The goddamn train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, you know, like, look, I, I understand <laughs> that at the time, technology is not that great, and you can't fucking superimpose uh, trains and stuff going by. But you know, I get that you're going to use that, you know, light coming past with the shadow of the train. But that's cool. Do it a little bit faster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kieran 
has just asked us a question. If she's the only one who seems to be constantly bombarded with Robert's man, Robin's man bits in Batman sixty six, so that's quite <laughs> I know, I'm Thanks pretty sure me. I'm pretty sure most of the extras that were on the sets, uh, anybody that Burt Ward came in contact with throughout sixty six to about seventy four, just <laughs> yep. Just yeah, did, did yeah. He, his, his, if you read his book, his dick is a stick. Yeah, he, he bombarded he it. He bombarded you in writing with his penis. He wrote. I think he wrote the book with his, his dick. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. Ju- just ejaculating on the page and spreading it. He, 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 That's why. There's a letter <laughs> each page. Here's the kicker: is where you're gonna think he's got two legs. Three legs. No, he's got two legs. One's his dick. <laughs> the other one's his leg. <laughs> He's got That's no why he's got to jump out of the back. <laughs> Close his cock up like his springs. Yeah. Boing, boing. Oh, God. <sighs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, no, uh... Batman. Batman, you say? Batman. 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 Uh, Batman. 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 Yeah, I... The, see, <laughs> this villain was really good. The story was really not. Mm. Yeah. So you're kind of stuck and you're like, wow, I want to enjoy this, but you're just writing me nothing. It's it's the it's like same rob a bank every week. Rob a bank or steal some jewels every week. Yep. Yeah, but there was no... Although this time, what else I, was I've, I've never seen the police so active. Acid? What, hey, what'd you say, Brayden? I said I've never seen the police so active and play like... A, a good part in arresting someone. Normally, they're just completely useless. Yeah, but the yeah. police are pretty useless because they didn't even notice that the right-handed Commissioner Gordon is using his left hand. That's right. <laughs> Chief Ahara was not Chief Ahara. That's right. Even though oh, he that's was... kind of fair because all you have to do is go. Oh my god, I can't do anything. <laughs> well, it takes a strong. <laughs> I'm to... <laughs> going to talk really slowly and in an look... Irish accent. In an Irish not really accent, and I'm going to look around like I'm suspicious. <laughs> He's actually doing quite well. That's the disturbing part. Are you cheap, police chief O'Hara? Maybe I'm false face. You'll never know. He's false face! No, the real Matt Richards is left. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chad Kroger's hey, right hand. Matt Richards touches his dick with his right hand. You're using your left. False face! <laughs> <laughs> How could you tell? I love the fact he pulls a beard off and lights it on fire and nearly fucking sets himself on fire. <laughs> I watch the thing, I'm like, damn, man. That nearly hurt. Where's the OHS in the 60s? They'll just, like, set him on fire. Fuck it. <laughs> or, Roll the camera. Just, whatever, whatever happens, don't stop rolling. Just fucking film this shit. Just go with it. Just go he with knows it. just stop, drop, and roll. It's fine. <coughs> I, I doubt the mask is flammable. There, it's latex. There, there's, there's, a, there's a fire extinguisher near the sound booth over there. You have to climb over all the cables to get to it. Batman's got one in his utility bag. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be fun. <sighs> so, yeah, what do you guys got to say about this? Not much. Like, I, I, I agree with you. The villain was really good. The use of the villain could be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. But honestly, the story... And the same whenever there's a female ench woman, Poor she always goes girl. into rehabilitation. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because the guys true. aren't worth saving. But, but they always go to the Wayne Reformatory. So you always get yeah. to meet Bruce Wayne before you go, which to me just makes you think Bruce is just banging these bitches mm-hmm. and then being like, off you go to the reformatory. In fact, it's not a... Oh, it's I mean, not sure a, Adam West it's, it's not a reformatory. It's an S&M lounge. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... No, it's his... It's um, a dungeon. <laughs> it's his bloody... Uh, what do you call it? It's, Playroom. Yeah, it's the room with the, the head that swivels, with the bat poles in it. It's the office with the red phone. <laughs> People come in, they're like, red phone, isn't that Batman's phone? He's like, no, that's the red phone. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. Exactly. <sighs> red is for danger. The red phone's broken. <laughs> and then Alfred will walk in and be like, "Excuse me, sir. Oh. I know you are in the middle of banging a oh. bitch, but that phone." He didn't even he didn't even whisper it this episode. No. He was like, "That phone, sir." Well, it was only those two. So, and he still went in the lane. Like, but but fucking Harry, Aunt Harriet came in like a second later. He's like, "That phone, sir." <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Harriet comes in, Where are you guys going off to? I've got a brunch. Fuck off. Uh, Don't. Did anyone did anyone else think when you see the light um, approaching from the train in the subway of that scene from Monty Python yeah. where <laughs> where he's running across the field and then you 
you yeah. cut back to it and he's right back at the start again, running across <laughs> yeah. and just keep playing that over and over. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, that's uh, the meaning of life. Yeah. Oh, the meaning of life. Yeah, it's yeah. the meaning of life. Yeah. Yep. Oh god. But yeah, it's just. Eh. All right, let's hand out some awards. <sighs> Grandstands. False face. Fuck you. False face's face. Just false face's face. Yeah. Yeah. Makeup. False face's makeup. Makeup. Yeah. Makeup. Man, oh, I love it. Do you notice in the uh, <laughs> Do you notice in the credits that uh, they had a question mark as false face? Yes, I did. I did notice that. That was quite cool. That is, that is However, cool. Uh, just give me a moment. Oh, you fuck! You're gonna ruin that. Some script writer. I just let me tell you who it was. The answer, in fact, is who played him was question mark. Um, I believe they did. There was a voiceover after episode eighteen, which said his name. Um, or, or, no, 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 he did some voice acting in the animated series, Batman, one of the Batman animated series. I can't remember who he played or anything, but he did Would some voice like acting. Would you like me to tell you who the actor's name really was? Yeah, Because his name is unbelievable. Malachi yeah. Throne. Oh, what a what? name. And now, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just do a little bit of research here. Since Braden's Ooh. telling us he's done some voiceover work, let's have a look. But, of course, the internet's yeah. loading like shit because it was installed by man. Um... <laughs> He did voiceover for Green Lantern First Flight. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's who? He was Ranikar. Okay. Who is one of the... Um, Lantern Corps. The Lanterns. He was in Batman Beyond as Fingers in the episode Speak No Evil. He oh, was in yeah. the film Catch Me If You Can as Abe Penner. Mm-hmm. He did voiceover work for Avatar The Last Airbender. He was in the new Batman Adventures as the judge and the bartender in Judgment Day. Uh, he was in an episode of Babylon 5. He was in an episode of Animaniacs. He was in Melrose Place with Johnny Drama. Uh, <laughs> he played Senator Pardet in Star Trek The Next Generation Unification, which was the episode where Spock came back to bring unity between the Vulcans and the Romulans. He was in Law and Order as Judge Real in the episode Mushrooms. <laughs> fucking awesome. Man, what this guy really fucking everything. Unbelievable. Oh, like Bert Waterhouse? He was, in, yes, a, he was in a movie called It's a Bird, It's a Plane, It's Superman as Boss. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hawaii Five O. what God, did this guy do? Man. Is he still alive? <laughs> <laughs> no, he died, and sadly, March 13th, 2013, he died at the age of 84. Oh, yeah. That's, what a phenomenal career. That's though. a fucking hell of a career, actually. Born in New York on December 1st, 1928. Son of immigrants who had come from America from the Austro Hungarian Empire. Well done. That's my son's birthday. Water. Well, there you go. Oh, there you go. It's, yeah. a, it's a month after my birthday, the greatest thing. <laughs> so, who else has given out? So, so, who we got for Barbara's for this one? Harriet. So she you. wasn't even in enough of it to. For me no, to she just irks me. She's giving. I'm, I'm she giving pisses it. me off. You're giving it to Alfred? Alfred yeah, just me too. Default. Bad film, sir! It to Alfred. Excuse me, sir! Bad, bad sir! Bat phone! Bat phone, you dumbass! <laughs> <laughs> Batman, the Australian's years. years. Oh, he can't, you fucking phone ring it! You gonna answer it? I ain't fucking time for this shit! Cooking a fucking barbecue, mate! You Get your it. fucking sandals on! I'm fucking cooking your kangaroo! You can't even answer your own fucking bat phone! Remember to fucking slip slop, slap Master Bruce! Fuck You'll you. get fucking burnt! And see Shane, you dumb fuck! <laughs> Fire up the bat commodore! <laughs> The Bat Falcon. Hurry up, do it, you can't. <laughs> Clean your own fucking bat pole. Oi! I gotta go down. fucking charger. He fucking phone's flat. I can't find what I'm looking for in me bat bum bag. I gotta go to Sandling 20 minutes. Over your dead. Daylight, sir. Better use the Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, Brayton, are you coming out of here? <laughs> you oh. I, I think after that, I'm just going to go Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, on. <laughs> let, let's love this thing up. I'm going to go with three. Like, like I said, three, it, I, I rate this because of the villains, yeah. ultimately. Yeah. That's yeah. what the show is about. Yeah, I'll go three and a half, just just because Paul's face was so good. Also, I need, uh, sorry, just, just to interject before you guys give out your glove rating, I realised I made a mistake a couple of weeks back. Very rare for me, but I will, I will correct it because... No longer fuck up free. Because obviously, I, it's not a fuck up, it's just a glaring omission. Uh, <laughs> Frank Gorshin, in fact, is not the longest tenured Batman mm. villain. Yeah. 22 episodes goes to Cesar Romero as the Joker, and 20 episodes to the Penguin. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. Fred Gorshin, despite eating all the scenery and all the LSD, only in 10. That's probably why he's only in 10, because they couldn't afford to rebuild <laughs> the fucking scenery. That's and true. Afford the to one, the more one that LSD. could upset me, uh, I, don't know when, I don't know when he comes in again, so mm. we, we're, like, it's not spoilers for that, but we do have one more appearance of the world famous Hat Factory! We get the Mad Hatter again. Hat Factory! Hat Factory! Hat Factory! So, sorry, speaking hey. of Hat Factories, what are you giving it for? Hat Scratcher! Yeah, I'm going to give it a three. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, uh, there's parts of Batman that I'm, re- I'm really struggling to get over. Burt Ward, Alfred, Aunt Harriet. But <laughs> just everyone. Yeah. Everyone but Adam West. Because yeah. Adam West is just... Yeah, I'm giving, it a, I'm giving it a three. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh, I'll give it a three and a half. Whoa. It's just... False Face was such a unique villain. Yeah, I really like that. I like the fact. I, I I wish he was like one of those regulars, like Joker, Riddler, and Lesnar. False. The I I don't know if they went to the same sort of thing with Clay, is it Clayface Face in DC? Yeah. I don't know if they went the same sort of route, but False Face is really cool. I like that idea. Yeah. I like that idea. The idea of identity theft is fun to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, Kevin Owens. Um, yeah, um, Australian Federal Police, please look out for Honey Badger Terry O'Neill because he's. I'm not the Honey dead. Badger. Yeah, he's he's Kevin Owens. Sorry, Kevin Owens. Get it right. <laughs> uh, Steve Andrews Got me gold Same with that Took a B Oh Took a B was amazing It's hilarious Don't know about that Renee Juvenile The question queen Has requested that we wear tutus Yeah not gonna happen No you don't know Not for me It's gonna happen Question queen We will be back At some point With tutus Not me We'll do it for charity We'll do it for We'll charity. raise money for whatever Stephen Amell's charity is By wearing tutus Excellent Done At some point in time and I also like and I'll be, Okay, look, here's, here's how I take this, and Matt can get upset with me as he wants. Comfortable with my sexuality and with my manhood. Have no issue wearing it. clothes because clothes are genderless at the end of the day. I have Terry, are you comfortable with your manhood and comfortable wearing any sort of clothes? Well, I have breasts, so women's clothes Brayden, how do you feel about wearing clothes? Do you feel clothes are all unisex at the end of the day because colour schemes don't really matter? And before the year 1860 something, pink was for boys anyway? And I just forget. get onto YouTube, you'll find me in a dress, it's all good. That's right, I've been in dresses multiple times on this thing. Okay, so, <laughs> I'm saying that I don't have any problem with clothes, or gender specific clothes, or anything like that, that shit. Mm-hmm. I just don't like looking too good. Would you wear a moo moo? What's a moo moo? Fat dress. A moo moo is like, yeah, fat. The fat episode coat. of Simpsons like, where Homie gets over 500 pounds. Yeah, yeah I'll And, and I'll, I'll ask you this then, so, you've seen Ace Ventura, right? I see. That yeah. that one scene is your favourite of yeah. all time in comedy. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so I'm, on, just, I'm just wondering if you're not a little bit hypocritical there. Okay, I'll, 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 we'll make an exemption for you. You can dress as Ace Ventura in that scene. No, I'll get you one better. Oh, tutu? Tutu? He's no, done. Done. He said done. No, done. He said okay, done. okay done. as long as you wear the tutu. Otherwise, I was going to say tutu, 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 bride to be sash. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll do the Ace Ventura. I'll get my hair done. Yeah, cool. I'm fine with that. See? And it's for charity. And I'm dead set. We'll raise money for, for whatever Amel's charity is. In fact, write that into the fucking agent. And just say, we'd like to know what charity Stephen and Mel currently endorses. And so we're going to do a fundraiser for that. Even though you're not interested in being on our show, we just want to do the right thing. Also, Stephen and Mel's agent. A little bit of fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm working on it. Like, as I said, it is... First four emails that I've sent in this endeavor. So it's hey, you've, 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 you've had that. Well, you could have got a yes. You could have got a yes from all three of them. And been like, "Hey, it's Chad Kroger here. My wife just left me." <laughs> Brayden, he's earned brownie points. Brayden, save that for next week. <laughs> Yeah, Fuck yeah, Brayden, Brayden, save, save it for next week. Steaming pile of shit. Fuck you. Next week, Brayden. Next week. Next save week. it for next week. So, so thank you very much, uh, Kieran Ross. For yeah, that. we will get on. We thank will get on. Much. We will get on to that. Uh, back to you in a little bit of time once we know what charity we need to develop to and what episode it'll be. Probably, I imagine that'll that'll probably be in the fifties. Well, I was thinking fifty-two. End of a year. Fifty-two Wait, reminds me two two. Okay. Fine. The episode 52, 52, 52 will be the charity episode. Excellent. The one before the big awards ceremony, which of course In fact, we can present 53. our awards in tutus. Make it a no, gala. That would be episode event. 53, though, because that would be at the one year anniversary. Ooh. So he, here's what you're kind of doing now. You you're kind of three. cutting the balls off of like the plan that I have already in place. Yeah. All right. Well, that brings us to the moment we got. We're about to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. 
but we will be back very soon with another part, so please stand by. When we'll come back, we'll be talking, of course, oh. SummerSlam. You don't want to miss it, because literally, I may kill a motherfucker. <laughs> you may actually see a murder happen. It's worth watching just for that. So I'm we'll see you all very, very soon. Love it, Michael. But before we go to that, gay and frisky. <laughs> all right. See you all very, very soon.